Okay, so you bought your brand new Mac Mini for your home theater system, and you're super excited, but when you start it up, you notice that everything is extremely small, and maybe you have a little bit of underscan or overscan. Um, you'll notice that I fixed it on my television, but what you want is uh, each corner to be completely filled. You don't want it to go past or under, and I'll show you what I mean by um, overskin and underskin in a moment. Um, but And then going back to the text being really small, um, by default it outputs uh, 1080p. Um, or maybe it just does to a 1080p television, maybe it wouldn't on a 720p. Um, but if you're in the same situation I am, uh, what you'd want to do is go down to settings. or system preferences rather, then click on displays. Alright, now here's all your options that you're looking for. I'm going to change it to 720p, and you'll notice that it instantly changes. Now everything's just a lot bigger and easier to read. Obviously your trade-off is that you won't be able to see as much information on the screen at the same time. Um, but 720p is really just fine for uh, basic web browsing and watching videos and pretty much anything you would do with a Mac Mini in your home theater system. Um, now, as I was talking about earlier, your uh, overscan and underscan, that's this slider right here. I'm going to zoom out so you can see what I'm talking about. You'll see how that changes. You want to get it exactly in the corner so you're not losing information but um, at the same time you're not wasting space so I'm going to go ahead and X out of this one thing you'll want to do after you get your Mac Mini out of the box is make sure that it's completely updated um, updating the Mac Mini or whichever Mac product you have is extremely simple um, you'll just want to go up here click on the Apple and then click on software update. It'll start checking for new software. Um, it only takes a few minutes. The first time that you go through this process, it's probably going to take about an hour or an hour and a half. Uh, so you're definitely going to want to uh, play around or do whatever you want to do with your Mac Mini first uh, before starting this process. Uh, it's extremely simple. You can show details to see what it exactly is updating. You can uh, decide to do it later, or you can install and restart. Uh, but this is definitely something that you'll want to do. I would advise doing this uh, before installing any applications. The next thing you're going to want to do is download Plex, or uh, Boxy, or some kind of media manager. So I'm going to click on Safari here. Of course, we're going to get our introduction. This is the first time running it since I... Uh, reformatted my Mac Mini. So I'm going to go up here to Google and type in Plex. Click on their website. Click on Download. And it's going to start right away. I'll come back once the uh, download is finished. Alright, so it just finished. We're going to double click on this. And uh, I'll bring up this screen. What you're going to want to do, and I know that this is probably new for most people, it was for me, I, um, I'm not a Mac user, uh, what you have to do is drag this down into your Applications folder down there. I'm going to zoom out. You might want to uh, change the high def resolution if you can't see this really well. Um, it shouldn't be too bad. I'm going to drop it in there. And you'll see that it's installing. And that's all there is to it. So now I'm going to come up here, close out of this, close out of that, and close out of this. Now I'm going to go down here to Applications and find my Plex. Alright, there it is. To make things easier, I'm going to drag this right in between my iTunes and Photo Booth. 
That way I'll have instant access. I'm going to click once on it. Alright, we're just going to click on open here. We're just going to go through the wizard. Pretty standard stuff right here. Um, if you have movies already on your Mac Mini that you want to load into the application, um, you can go through this step. I'm just going to click on skip. TV show, skip. Music, skip. Now, Plex and Boxy and all these uh, media managers, or at least the sophisticated ones, uh, they allow you to download what they call plugins which allow you to have access to uh, various content on the web but through their interface so that you can use your remote you know, rather than um, actually going to the website so it, it, you know everything's also obviously more friendly I'm just going to make a couple choices here and then click on next uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on this just so that I have everything. I'm going to uncheck this. Um, not a big deal. Uh, if you leave this checked, they're going to um, collect how you use their software. I'm going to click on finish. Alright, just got to put in my password here. Now you'll notice that there's a little status icon up there. Uh, you can play around with those options. I'm just going to get it to go away here. Um, here they give you just a little bit of information. We're going to click on close. Alright, so now we are ready to actually use Plex for the very first time. Now, you can install this uh, remote application which just allows you to have a little bit more control and do more things with your Apple remote or even other remotes. So, I'm going to go and uh, download this and show you guys how to do this. I think this is something you're going to want. on free download. This doesn't take very long at all. And you'll notice it here in the background. Just double click. Click install. Accept the agreement. Click install. Type in your password. And that's all there is to it. Um, you can do all kinds of things with this. Um, not, I mean, it's not a huge application, but um, and you can use it to do a whole lot more than what Apple uh, intended you to do. So uh, we're going to close out of all this now. And we're ready to load up Plex for the very first time. Now, okay, it's going to ask to check for updates automatically. Hit yes. Um, you have to either use the keyboard or the Apple remote, so I'm going to have to come back and get one that's not wireless. Alright, so I'm going to click yes. And there we go. Now, just a couple shortcuts that you'll want to know. Um, the backslash is how you go to full screen. Um, and then when you're running through menus, uh, you're going to want to hit escape to go back. 
Uh, first, I want to go to Video Plugins. This shows you what we have so far. Um, you can go into any one of these and bring up their menus. Obviously, each one's going to be a little different. I'm going to hit Escape, Escape. And now we're going to download some new applications. Go to Plex Online. And you'll probably be pretty surprised with uh, how much is out there. I'm going to go down to Most Popular. Um, here's just a few to show you. And that's just most popular. There's quite a few other ones. I'm going to do YouTube. Just click Install. By the way, I'm hitting Enter key. And that's all there is to it. Now if we hit Escape and go back to Video Plugins, you'll notice we have a YouTube channel. I will go this month most viewed and easily get to any one of these now I'm gonna just click on one here if you hit the space button it'll pause it and give you a little bit of information there's a bunch of other keys if you look up uh, Plex keyboard shortcuts uh, you'll find them all there's one more thing I need to show you, and admittedly, it's probably the second most important thing you need to do, um, other than connecting it to your television, literally, um, is changing your sound options. Uh, by default, and let me just uh, hover down here while I'm talking, um, you want to click on System Preferences. By default, the Mac Mini puts out the sound through its tinny internal speaker. Um, and we obviously, if you have this for your home theater uh, system, you're going to want to beam it out to your uh, surround sound system. So, uh, once you have that up, click on sound. And you'll want to click on this output tab here. And make sure that HDMI is selected. Um, you might have a different device name over here on the left, but as long as you're on HDMI, you're fine. So I'm going to get out of here, and uh, that's not the only thing you need to change though. We also need to uh, change the setting in Plex. Uh, so we're going to go over here, go on Preferences, System, Audio, click over here to the left, and you'll be able to change your uh, output device. Uh, you got built-in output, which is the uh, tinny speaker that's built into your Mac Mini. Uh, Soundflower, I'm really not sure what that is. That had to do with the uh, application that we installed. And then HDMI, which is what you want. Uh, all these other options, you can just leave the same. So that's all I have right now. I'll probably have another video up later uh, for Boxy or some other cool things you can do. Um, I've so far been really impressed. Um, I really do think I made the right decision. Obviously, uh, the boxy box is about to come out. You have the uh, uh, Netflix box and Google TV is about to come out. But with going this route, you have an entire ecosystem to work with. You're not stuck with just boxy or just um, Netflix movies and Amazon videos. But you have access to anything and everything any other computer could get to. Um, and then obviously, uh, with so many people starting to use the Mac as a home theater PC, uh, we're probably going to see even more develop in terms of applications and what you can do. So that's all there is to this video. Um, I hope it was helpful, and hopefully I'll have time to put out something else in the near future.